Hello and welcome to K2C TV. I'm Kerry Griffiths and I'm your host and your demonstrator. And we're going outside. We're having a garden party. I think so many of us have been cooped up for so long that now spring is here in this hemisphere. And in the southern hemisphere, obviously, we've got autumn. And believe me, I've been down there. Autumn is a nice time of year as well. It's time to get out in the garden, invite friends around, have a garden party, have a get together. Here in the UK, you might want to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee this year. Um, it could be a charity, it could be a fundraiser, anything. Let's just go and enjoy friends and family and fresh air. So we're going outdoors, we're going to the garden party theme. Now um, we've got new launches here, we've got three brand new launches and we've got a back by popular demand. We'll look at that in a moment. But I need to remind you guys, we are live and I want to see comments from you. I want to know your names, where you're from, what you're doing. And it's especially important this time because we have a giveaway at the end of the show. One of the pieces I'm demonstrating is going to be sent out to a comment. It's going to be a random pick comment, but it needs to be a comment in this show. So the more comments you do, the bigger the chance you've got of being in to win it. And don't forget, after the show, don't do it now because I want you to stay after the show. Go back and take a look at the cake show I did this morning. It'll be on it'll be on the website. You'll see the links on social media. We have some real fun. So if you are thinking about going garden party, we have the food for it there. These demonstrations are going to be about capturing those moments, capturing those memories, giving maybe a little time capsule, something to hand down and celebrate when we all came out of lockdown and we all had a jolly good time. So I think we actually need to have a look at some samples because there were some fabulous the sample sent in. So here we go. We've got some fabulous crafting samples here. Lovely work from the design team as always. Always, always supported and I never thank them enough and thank you guys. But there's such a variety of what can be done with these molds. It's just absolutely wonderful. And I'll be showing you the molds in a second. It was, it was remiss of me. I forgot to show them in the first place. But you know what? We've had a busy day with all this cake and sugar. I think I may have eaten one too many cupcakes. So the website uh, you need to go to is www.kitsudesigns.com. And if you do a forward slashing garden party, that will take you directly to the page where everything on the show is actually housed. Now, I did mention them, but I didn't show them to you. So we have back by popular demand, show it to the close of camera. We have our afternoon tea. Now, we did have this mold out a little while ago. We had it, lots of requests to keep the mold and bring it back. So we tweaked it slightly. So this is back by popular demand, loving that. Also, we have on the show, brand new today, we have the Union Jack alphabet and the Union Jack numbers. I love these. They take texture so well. Like when you impress the clay, which I'm going to do in a second, you'll find that all of the Union Jack is impressed onto them. Love that. They're very, very useful and a really handy size as well. And then another one that was actually stems from requests from um, some of our cake fans was they wanted a bigger bunting. And I love this because if you're a scrapbooker or a journaler, this gives you some real good opportunities to do nice lettering on banners. But as you can see, it's a really shallow mold, therefore really useful in size. So let's have a look at Let's look at one. Let's let's do the cupcake first of all. Now, in the mold, I'm actually going to be using air drying clay. Now, we do have air drying clay on the website. It comes in white and it comes in all of these other colors as well. When you go to the website, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see an option. There are these nine colors. They're very heavily pigmented. If you know your color wheel, you can mix colors to make other colors. So a little bit goes a very long way, I assure you. So I'm now going to use um, a little bit of pink. I'm going to do the cupcake case in pink, and I think I'm going to do the swirl of buttercream on top in yellow. Now, you have options when it comes to mold. You can use corn flour or cornstarch, tap it in, brush it around and knock out the excess. Or you can use white vegetable fat. And I mean, here in the UK, that would be Trex. Um, abroad, that may be Crisco. Uh, so just look for a vegetable fat, not an animal fat. And I'm just putting the smallest amount in there. You don't need to do, do both. It's either or your preference. So I'm going to take a little bit of the pink and I'm going to do the cupcake at the bottom of the case. I'm going to put my finger where the cream area is and I'm just going to tidy off the excess of my thumb just so I've got about the right amount. And I'm going to press that down into the molded piece. 
and here we go I've got my piece here so I'm not contaminating where the fresh cream will be so we're using fresh cream in yellow here because I found the white really blows out the contrast on the camera so I'm going to put that in press that down I'm just going to wipe off any excess make sure you can actually see all the way around the mold so you can see all of the edges and then give it a really good wiggle remember the oh, molds are really flexible there it goes so there you go let's pop that on the back of that and raise it up to that one so as you can see you get that nice swirl of cream on top of your cupcake case and that little heart at the top you could just paint that with a little bit of um, acrylic paint in red just to give it that pop so that's that's our one of ours done um, I'll leave the others at the moment because I want to show you the other ones we've got in here now I know that the darker colors probably work a bit better as far as contrast goes now I'm going to show you both options here so I'm going to use a bit of corn flour in the letters and I'm going to use a bit of white vegetable fat in the numbers now as I said it's completely up to you what you choose to use I've got hot sticky hands and also it's really humid here so I'm finding lots of stuff is likely to stick however wherever you are on the planet depending on um, your relevant humidity you may have different issues to deal with than I have here and also I live in Wales Wales is pretty much water anyway so I've got that in there it's all cleaned up give it a bit of a wiggle always utilize the flexibility of the mold pop it out flip that one over and if I lift that up and move it slightly you will see all of that beautiful detail that that's captured in there there you go let's pop that one to one side we might use that later and let's go on to the numbers now as I said make sure the comments come in guys because the more comments you do the more chance you are actually to win something so I'm going to do this and then before I do anything else which is the bunting mold I just want to take a quick look at some comments because I know you're already commenting I can see out the corner of my eye over there that I've got waving hands I've got thumbs up so if you're on Facebook we'd like to see a comment and if you're on YouTube um, a comment and a thumbs up both are fabulous we love it and appreciate it so again make sure you give this a good wiggle use the flexibility of the mold to pop it out and again if I tilt this you'll see all of that Union Jack detail in there lovely so I like leaving them as they are however if you were to dust them or use a gilding wax which I'll show a process for that in a little while then that will bring out the texture even more so let's put those to one side right before I get on to the bunting mold I just want to check a few comments and see where we're at with those so oh good grief there's so many um, okay Catherine Lieber I can't wait to see the tea party yeah nor can I <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there um, if you're looking for cake my dear, you need to go back to this morning show to watch this one then go back because I did cupcakes I did cookies I did a full decorated cake we worked with sugar it was fabulous I tell you what the staff have eaten half of it already if not all of it so <coughs> excuse me um, Jane love all the samples thank you very much Jane yes they are fabulous big shout out to the design team can't do it without you Jane Briggs hi Kerry back again bought some molds from this morning show thank you Jane and welcome back thank you for coming right to us you know good luck you may win I'm hoping someone does Doreen thank you again Dory Frost good morning good afternoon Kerry so many fabulous molds to add to our forever growing collection yes you know what they're a bit addictive but you know what they're so useful I mean I use my molds for clay I have another set that I use for sugar but if you're someone who uses resins you can pour resins into a lot of these molds because they're deep enough to capture detail there's lots of different uses for them absolutely lovely ideas Noreen Noreen and Irene hello Irene hi Noreen lovely to see you Jane Creed Jane nice to see you I'll be back in Wales tomorrow um, Dory watching from sunny Jersey I used to go to St Helier on holiday beautiful place of the world you've got there um, love all of your little sayings Kerry wiggle it just a little bit and tickle a cake from this morning what's wrong with a bit of wiggling and tickling that's what I want to know <laughs> okay so let, let's, let's let's get on with this one then so um, when it comes to um, 
shallow or really small apertures, I tend to favor the white vegetable fat. So I tend to go down, I'll push it down with my finger. Now you could go in and put a little bit of white vegetable fat on a brush and work it in with a brush, but I've always used my fingers. I, th I think it comes from being a baker and a confectioner. You use your hands a lot. So I'm gonna put some colored clay in here. Now you don't need a lot. Um, it depends on how you work. I tend to just push it down into the mold, but there are options. If you like using a modeling tool, you can use a modeling tool. If you don't have a modeling tool, the end of a paintbrush handle works easily as well. So this is a Dresden or a veining tool. If you have one of those, they work perfectly well. However, where's my paintbrush handle going? If you use the end of a paintbrush handle, you can do exactly the same thing. So once you've got that in there, again, give it a wiggle get the air underneath it, give it a slight touch, and out it will come. Try not to distort it, Griffiths. Let's just flip this over a second. Come on, flip over. There you go. Now, whenever you mold something out of clay or sugar, there's a really big chance it's going to distort when you take it out of the mold. It's a natural thing to happen. Um, just always put it back into its original shape before you let it dry off. So let's leave that to one side because I'm going to need that in a second or two. There you go. So we're going to pull out one of these now. And again, because this is a shallow depth piece in the mold, I'm going to use white vegetable fat to actually hold hold the clay in place because um, the Katie Sue molds are actually designed and manufactured here in the UK using the highest grade of food grade silicone that we can get. And you will find that they release so easily that with a shallow mold, I find that I have to put the vegetable fat in just to actually grip it. So again, I've got the mold filled. Give it again a bit of a wiggle. Use the flexibility of the mold. Oops, there it's got, and it's out. So now, while I've got this here, it's a good point to make. Now, if I wanted to, at this point, where's my little palette knife gone? I've lost my little palette knife. Let's use a paintbrush instead. Um, because both my clays are still wet, I can drop that on there and give it a slight touch down. And because both the clay surfaces are wet, they will actually stick to themselves. So if you're using air drying clay, wet clay will stick to wet clay. Wet clay is likely to stick to dry clay. Dry clay will never stick to dry clay. With that instance, you would need to use um, a glue that is good for paper because it's a paper based clay. So anything you can stick paper with, you can stick air dry clay with. I tend to use PVA glue a lot because it's it's inexpensive. It's readily available around the world. It does the job perfectly. So right, where are we up to? So we've got all of our different pieces molded. Um, I did want to bring your attention to we have the crown mold on the show. Now I've already done molded the crown out. I did this one probably be about an hour ago. So it's not fully dried, but it's dried enough. And what I wanted to show you is I wanted to show you the technique that I used on a lot of the things that I, I've used on the box, and that's a gilding wax. Now, a gilding wax, probably the best way to describe a gilding wax is it's almost like a metallic shoe polish. It's quite easily available in so many different colors and so many different companies do it. I doubt whether there isn't somewhere on the planet you can't order it. And what you do is you just take a little bit on your finger and as you rub it over the surface, it captures all of that detail. Now, it depends on how much you want to do as to how much you put on. But I've done this in a pale yellow just to give that gold-ish effect. And the more I add, the more it's going to color it up. But I think that's a lovely effect. It just gives it a lovely little wash of metallics. So, right, let's get that, get off my finger. I'm going to have that all over the place. The other things you can use for coloring the clays is you can use any paint that you use on paper or card, you can use. So you could use your watercolors, you could use your acrylics, you could use your inks. Although I would have, when you're using the inks, be aware because the clay can be porous when it's dry. If you use a really liquid ink, it might bleed a little bit. So that's another thing to think about. So I think I need to look at some comments. Um, let's have a look, see what we've got over here. Um, Vicky Maskell, love these moles, watching from Essex. Hello, Essex. What the heck was that accent? God, goodness knows where that came from. <laughs> Lorraine Kelly. Um, Lorraine Kelly, not the Lorraine Kelly, surely. Um, if it is, hello, Lorraine Kelly. Um, 
bank balance is about to be hit again. Mm, sorry about that. Uh, but you know what? It's an investment. A mold is an investment. Never use a sharp object on your mold, and it's a mold for life. And very useful it is along the way. Um, Tina Elliott Lawler, I've just purchased the poppy mold. Have you ever used this one with clay? Um, are you talking about the Flower Pro poppy mold? And if you are, yes, I have used it for clay. Um, I believe there's a tutorial from um, Chef Nicholas Lodge on how to use the poppy mold. And I believe he does it in clay. If he doesn't do it in clay, he definitely talks about the the options of using clay when he's doing sugar but yes it can be done in them um i i'm the i was the flower pro ambassador for several years and i made all of the flower pro range out of air drying clay whereas nicholas lodge predominantly focused on sugar and clay i did just clay so yes i do know it can be done um i've got one here actually is that clay no, that's way for paper. So I don't know where they are, but yes, you can definitely, if you're talking about the flower per range, yes, you can definitely do air drying clay on them. Um, let's have a look. Jackie Sizer, um, so much detail in the crown mold. There is so much detail in the crown mold. Let's see if I can, here's the mold itself. Let's see if I can go to the overhead for this one and go as close as I can. Can you see all of that absolute glorious detail in there? Um, it actually works really, really well with resin as well. So if you've got a pouring resin, that's one you want to use as well. So a fabulous, fabulous mold. Um, I use it a lot. Um, you can even use it. For, I've used it for chocolate before now. But I mean, it's great for resins, great for clay, great for sugar. So there you go. Right. I think we need to take a look at the website now, I believe. The little voices in my ear are saying website. So... So here we are. As I said, if you go to www.ktcdesigns.com forward slash garden party, this is where you're going to end up. Now, when you're on this, if you scroll down, you'll see every single thing that is actually on the show. And I'd highly recommend looking around a bit because if you're going to put stuff in the basket, all the best. Now, this was the bundle we actually put together for the show, which are the crowns and the Union Jack alphabet and number. Click on them add them to the cart and here you go from here on and it's exactly the same as any other website would be you go to check out but do scroll down and do make sure you check out every other detail so there you go some fabulous stuff on that we we tried to select as much as we could that would go within the gardening theme so the garden party theme was this morning the garden party theme and capturing the memories of it is this afternoon so right Remember, keep the comments coming in, guys, because one of the boxes is going to go to one of you guys. So it's either going to be this box, the garden party box. I'm recreating this now live for you. This is the one I believe you're seeing next. Um, or it's going to be the memory keeping box, which is this one. So the more you comment, the more chances you've got to get one of these be one one today. So I wanted to start by talking about the box itself. OK, now I've used just a generic box that looks like a shoe box. And what I wanted us to do is I wanted us to recycle or upcycle an existing box. So I've chosen something that looks like a shoe box. If you haven't got one, you can buy these from a regular craft store, wh wherever you are in the world. If it's a box that's actually got a hinging lid, that works equally as well, because I did think of you guys, because whereas I've used, where have I put it? I've used locks and keys on this. I've actually given you hinges as well. So if you've got a box that's got a hinging lid, you could put faux hinges on the top just to give it a bit more of an authentic look. So there you go. So now, first thing before I start decorating one of the other boxes, the two Dems are going to be about decorating the boxes. However, I wanted to make sure you knew the tips and tricks that I've used for actually creating a covered box. Let's move that to one side. I move that to one side. Now, I've already covered one end and I had to do that on purpose because there are a few things I need to do explain. Because not all boxes are perfectly straighted down the edges, I wanted to have a little bit of a wrap round here and a wrap round on the bottom. So the first thing I do whenever I get a box is I'll put the lid on. I would if I can get the lid on, there you go. I'm gonna take a pencil and I will draw all the way around the box where the lid meets the box 
there's a reason why I do that and that is because some box lids are really tightly fitting and if you were to decorate above this line you may no longer get the lid on so that's just the reason I did that we'll revisit the lid in a moment so coming on to this end now I'm going to choose paper now we do have a couple of paper packs on the on the show they're actually digital paper packs so they're there for if you want to download and print them we thought it only fair there just in case you wanted to use the kits that we're using however you can use whichever papers you choose for this so i've made a mark there so i've given myself probably about a centimeter maybe a little bit less overlap on either side I'm gonna come in and i'm a guillotine guy if you've got a trimmer a trimmer works equally as well for this job so come in and chop that bit off that goes over to my scrap box now i'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom because i know i don't need all of this so let's put that down to one side so now there's a couple of tricks at this point if i line this up at the top that's a little tricky because i'm trying to do this with the overhead here so i'm going to line it up with that line there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pinch my fingers and mark the edges and I want to do that because there's a little bit of snipping needs to be done. And then on the bottom edge here, I'm going to run my fingers along the bottom edge as well. Once I've got those done, pull it down and then I'm going to fold over and I'm going to give it a finger, a finger press down either side, finger press down either side. And then where I put the crease, I'm going to marry up the sides of the card because I know that's a 90 degree angle and cut it. Um, fold it across now I just want to test it that will then fit perfectly onto the side of my box as you can see it goes up the top a couple of things I want to do with the scissors however I'm going to snip just above the fold that was where it turned around the box corner and I'm going to use a pair of bigger scissors I'm going to snip within the crease within the inside of the crease that I made there. So I want this to be slightly narrower than the base of the box. And that being, because I don't want it to stick out and it's not going to be seen anyway. So just want to make sure it's done. So I've ended up with a piece that looks like this. So it's a really fat T shape. So next thing I want to do now, a lot of the glues and the processes I'm going to use, it's completely up to you how you do it. This is just the way I found works for me. I've got some double sided tape. Now I'm using red liner tape only because it shows up on the camera because guess what? It's red. So put that over there, give it a bit of a snip. So you can use any double sided tape or no tape at all. This is my fingernail. So I can just capture the edge of that. I'm notoriously bad at not getting tape off. There you go. Now, before I go putting, um, my piece of paper on here i'm going to use this high tack white pva glue here you can use whichever glue you want you could potentially even use a glue stick it'll be down to you as to what you like to use now i like to run a line of glue along the side and the bottom and the side along the top i'm not going over the double-sided tape and i'm not putting a lot of glue on there either guys i'm just putting enough then i'm going to take my piece I'm going to slide it up and then when when it's in contact with the double sided tape, I'm just going to run my finger over it. Now, I'm going to take um, one of the, the plastic cards that they use in Flower Pro. Uh, you could use just a stiff piece of card. You could use no card at all. Completely up to you. All I'm doing is just smoothing that glue out a little bit. Then I'm going to come in from the side, put a line of glue up the side just to fold that over and a line of glue along the other side just to fold that over just so that it holds it in place and then when it comes to this just cover the bottom it's not like it's one of those things that's going to take a lot of beatings in its life this is pretty much going to be somewhere where you put stuff and it's going to be stored as a keepsake so it's going to be kept and respected in a storage place so there you go so that's how i did the ends now i had to do the other end first because the next bit of the process is to cover here and i can't do that if i haven't done the other end so i'm just going to really quickly do do one more side so i know it's a repetition of skill but i just want to make sure that everyone is exactly the same page as me 
we don't need to cover the box entirely because I said I already done that sorry Laura's in my ear what did you say Laura um I might do that Laura's making demands so I'm not sure we're actually going to go with them but there you go so. <laughs> I think Laura's going to fire me after this show. So there you go. She asked me to bring she asked me to bring it down a bit lower because I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be in screen. So I've made this almost the width of here, but you can see now why I've got the little wrap around. I again give a bit of a pinch across the bottom there, and then I would glue this down in exactly the same way as I did before. So I'm not going to glue this down because you've seen me do it already. So once we've done that, let's put my spare papers into there because I've already covered these boxes guys because I thought it'd be a bit of a boring demonstration if you actually watched me do that now when it comes to the top of the box I chose to cut my piece slightly smaller and I do this because if it's perfectly up against the edges of the box it could actually get caught but by putting it into the center it's totally fine I like to use just a regular glue stick for this now I know I've got white on white here so it's probably going to be quite hard to see but I mean, I think most of us have seen people use a glue stick before now. So just make sure you've got a good coating of glue stick or whichever glue you choose to use. And I come in and it will pop that directly on there. I like to use glue stick on this because it gives me some slideability. It means I can move stuff around if it's not perfectly in position. Um, whereas some other paper glues will grip really quickly and they don't give me that flexibility. The other piece I want to do is I've cut a strip that will just go right along the side of there. And again, I would use a glue stick to stick that down. So that's how we've got all of the elements sorted for that. Put my glues, glue lids on, because goodness knows I forget about that. So, right, we're going to pull in now and we're going to actually work on the box that I want to work on, which is this one. Now, this has been covered in exactly the same fashion as I did the other one. OK, exactly the same way, which is why I wanted to do that dem. Now, while I'm setting up for this, don't forget, guys, comments, comments, comments. They're the best way to win. And that's what we want to do. We want you to win one of these boxes. So make sure you keep your comments coming in. And good grief. OK, you are keeping comments coming. Let's have a quick look at that. I've always crafted, but not a baker. It was it was me that got you into baking. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I don't apologize at all. Baking is amazing. Spot, spotted you on. Sh yes, I did do a sugar and crumbs dem. Wow, that's going back a little bit and you were hooked. Thank you, Jane. Lovely to see you. Lovely to hear that you got inspired and you kept going with your baking. Love that. I mean, it's, it's just it's a lovely thing. Who, who doesn't want to play with food? Um, Deborah ordered the crown mold yesterday, hoping it was going to enter the Jubilee cake competition. What a perfect idea. Is there a village fate near you that's actually holding the cake competition for the Jubilee? Is there things going on like that? Let me know. I don't know. I mean, good grief. I, I hadn't even thought about that. That's a lovely idea. Uh, need to put the thinking cap on. Need ideas as yet. No ideas as yet. You know what? Um, go to Pinterest. Just, just put in celebration cake and see what comes up. Just an idea will spark you off. So what I want to do now is I want to take this. I want to give this a little bit more of a vintage look. So these are some of the papers that are on the on the website. I've got a piece of this paper and I want to actually just give it a torn edge. So I'm literally going to tear it. So I'm going to come from here and I'm going to tear one side towards me just so that I've got a nice tear. Actually, that's pretty good. I don't mind that. Um, just to give it that sort of vintage look. Don't like that corner up there being so sharp. Just want to tear that a little bit further. Let's put that to one side. Again, I'm going to stick this on with a bit of glue stick because it's paper to paper. There's, there's no heavy duty card involved. So let's just give this a bit of this. Now, if you did want to make it look even more vintage, if you're someone who's got like um, distress inks and ink pads and stuff like that, you can run an ink pad around the edges to distress it to make it look even more vintage. But I wanted with this project to actually do a project where we're only using things that you can buy on the high street or you can find 
easily wherever you are. So that's that's why we've kept it relatively simple as far as equipment goes. I would rather someone create the box and leave it for somebody or capture memories in it. Because for us, this year is a really big turnaround year. I don't know about you, but for me, it feels like after what's happened over the last couple of years, this this is the year that things are beginning to find a new normal. And that's very important. And I like the fact that, yes, I'm kind of embracing that. I'm kind of taking it to the next level. And I'm a journalist, so capturing a lot of memories for me that I will look back on. And maybe this box can be a little bit of a time capsule. Put things in here that are important to you in this year. Lovely idea. So where are we up to? Right. I will bring the actual one in so I can see what I'm doing. So let's move that to the top. Now we have our box here. I'm going to use, I've used the locking keys on here. This is a lovely mold. Where is, where is it gone? Um, this is the mold I use. It's um, locks and keys or keys and locks. I always get confused about names, not very good at it. Um, I've used the one out of the middle and all I've done is I, I painted it sort of a rusty orange color and I put some silver gold, uh, silver gilding wax on the top. So that's how that came about. I've also done the same with the key, which is an element you'll see in the box itself. Now I'm just going to use um, a liquid glue here that's, it's what I call a high tack glue in that it glues really, really quickly. Um, and sticks quickly because I haven't got the time to be working and looking at things falling off the box. I want you to see that it's done straight away. So I need to tip this to me to make sure it's straight. So there you go. I've just put that on the side. Now what you could do, um, you could go in with a black marker and color that section black before you put that on to give it the image that it's actually a hole all the way through. I would do that with a permanent marker or even a bit of black acrylic paint. You can do that before you stick that on. So that's pretty much the sides of my box done. So now we're going to work on the top of the box and I'm going to work on the elements I've used. Now we've used the, um, what's this called? I forgot what this is called. Isn't that scary? Um, what is this mold called? Bunting. Thank you. The little voices in my head have gone. Kerry, it's bunting. Yep. I can tell you my brain is shut down. I think I ate too many of the cupcakes myself. So there you go. So I'm just going to put those out now. It's always good to almost audition the pieces. So so you audition the pieces on on there before you stick them down just so that you've got them in the right place. So a little bit of glue on the back and stick them down. As I said, anything that will stick paper or card will stick um, air drying clay. Now this glue will give me a little bit of wiggle time. So if I haven't got them perfectly symmetrical, I will do by the end. If you want a trick, if you got um, a dinner plate or something and laid a dinner plate there, that will give you the curve. You could actually lay them down against. There you go. So keep the comments coming. I can see them flying in because I'm trying to see them to my right here. I'm trying to read and glue at the same time. Who said men can't multitask? So glue, glue, glue. Right, I've lined all of those up as if they were on a piece of string. I mean, you could even draw the line if you really needed to. Then I want to come in with the word party along the bottom. So we've got the word party at the bottom. So stick that down. Now, obviously at home, take a little more time than I'm doing. Have some fun. I mean, have the, get the children involved. If you've got children or grandchildren, get them to each make their own box. Maybe sit down and make all of the elements for them and they give them a box to decorate each. That's a great way to mark maybe a summer barbecue with friends or if you are having a street party or there's a local fair where you're celebrating the Jubilee for the Queen, then maybe that's a good way to do it as well. There you go. So I've got all of the letters on there, nice and neat. Now, um, the crown, as I said, you can paint it. I painted mine with acrylic paints. If you do want your piece to be slightly shiny, and not everyone does, but if you do want it to be slightly shiny, what I would say is get yourself an inexpensive hairspray and just give it a quick 
spray it with a hairspray and that lacquer will give you a bit of a sheen to your product um, not not necessarily for any other reason than just because you want it to be slightly shiny so now the teapot um, the teapot and the cup are actually using the tea time mold however you will have noticed that on them they've got these tiny little blossoms they're the little blossoms that come out of this mold this is the birds and blossom mold i love this for little decorative elements if you're someone who does card making or scrapbooking these tiny little pieces are fabulous add so much detail to your work so we're going to stick those down let's pop you on there and pop you on there now i have made extras of the little flowers as you can see and I'm just going to stick them randomly on my get off my finger stuck to me and not not the not the garland the word I can't remember how scary is that I think I'm getting old people I think I'm getting old so bunting do I call it a garland didn't I yes Laura's in my ear going you said it wrong again so she's picking on me people okay we saw me make the cupcake earlier on that's an easy that was what i meant by painting the top with a little bit of a cherry on top now i liked the idea of the key so i want i had the lock and i thought let's put the key on there as well i like to sit that down the side now this was just my version of how I like to decorate this. You can take all of these elements completely any way you wish and make them in any way you want. Make it absolutely your own. So I want to celebrate the year with 2022. Oops, I nearly put the wrong date on. That would be it. Okay, got you. The little voices in my ears. Well, I hope they're little voices in here and I'm not just hearing things wouldn't be at all surprised at least it's not yeah laura just said at least it's not a big voice yeah so there you go right and that's finished the top of my box so i'm going to set this to side to side to one side to dry but i want to take a quick look at the finished one that's already dried so this this is the one we've already done you've just seen me do this i've duplicated it perfectly i chose um to you do the union jack symbols on here you could make this as pretty as you want in whatever papers you want and decorate it in any way shape and form you want so just a really nice idea to celebrate maybe if you are going to a garden party how about using this box to put some treats in i would first line it with some wax paper or something so that the box doesn't soak up anything but maybe fill it with sweets and cookies or stuff, stuff you take to the party there you go so i think it's about time i took a little look at what we've got going on over here um actually there's a lot there okay i'm going to send you to look at a, a look at a little bit of a cake samples from this morning while i quickly skim down the comments and get ready for my next demonstrations so enjoy these guys this is what we came up with this morning and some other inspirationals
Does that make you hungry? Makes me feel hungry. So, and I've already eaten some of the cake. I shouldn't be going back for more cake. Um, but as you can see, there's a whole versatility in the molds. Yes, they can be for cake. Yes, they can be craft and resin. However, we do recommend if you're using them for cake, don't use them for craft. If you're using them for craft, don't use them for cake. Purely because there might be some cross contamination. We don't know what you're putting into the mold. So we recommend you have separate ones. So as I said, I did a quick skim down the comments. Uh, believe me, there's a lot of comments. Thank you. You're all in, in it to win it, aren't you? So let's see. Um, Karen Keane, love the Union Jack look. Yes, it does look fabulous. Um, especially put some gilding wax on it. It will really pick up that detail. Or even if you dust it or airbrush it or just paint it, it'll just pull up. Even a dry brushing technique over the top will really pull that detail through. Katrin Lieber, um, I also love your YouTube channel. I've learned so much from you. Thank you very much. It's it's a pleasure to share skills and knowledge, and and that's on my personal YouTube channel. So thank you very much for that. Um, I will see you around. Plenty of YouTube's on the way to you. Um, Nikki King, stunning paint uh, papers, very vintage. Yes, we did go through a lot of digitals trying to find ones that really inspired or invoked that vintage feel because we're really conscious. Oh, and I know here in Britain we've got the Queen's Jubilee, but anyone out there who wants to do scrapbooking or wants to create vintage looking journals, they're a really good collection of papers and there's some really nice color schemes with them as well. Uh, Lorraine Kelly, what a great idea, loving the ripped paper decoration. Oh, I rip paper all the time. Even if I don't need to rip paper, I do rip it. Um, if you want to accentuate that detail anymore, use a bit of distress ink and maybe a sponge and just catch the torn edge. And it really adds to that really, really aged look of the papers. Loving that. Um, Sapphire, I don't... Ooh. I've lost you. Where are you gone? Um, I don't bake. I use all the more molds for lightweight clay. They work perfectly. Yes, they do. Um, I've got a really big collection. You have no idea how many molds I've got. And I do dip into them constantly. And I like to revisit some of the older ones as well, um, because I think sometimes we buy so many things. We use them and put them by. Go back through stuff, guys. There's some great designs there. And especially you've got Katie Sue stuff. You've got so many options with the molds out there. Thank you, Sapphire, for your comment. Lorraine, I love the key and lock mold. It's so vintage. Yes, it is. I mean, I've used it on a box. You could use it on a journal cover. It could be anything like that. Or if you're someone who does dioramas or you just want to do a fairy door, say, you could use that for the lock on there. That would be a lovely idea. Deborah Russell, so many lovely molds I need to add to my already vast collection. Yeah, if you're like me, the collection is never going to end. It's going to keep growing. There's just so many unique designs coming out. Tina, I use polymer clay for finer molds. I pop in the freezer for five minutes after adding the clay so the pieces keep their shape and works better. Yeah, I think a lot of that will depend on where you are, the temperature of your hands, because I've got really hot hands, so everything just goes to mush with me. Um, you will find that find what works best for you is where I'm trying to go. Some people like to put their molds in the freezer or the fridge to reset the warmth out of the clay and then it sets firm some people do that with sugar as well uh, it depends on what your working preferences are but yes it is an option you can definitely do that right um joe madeline hello joe uh love using the lock on mdf boxes it's so realistic yes very good point get any of those mdf boxes it's a really realistic thing and because it's lightweight it won't add to the weight of the box Right, one last comment, and I do need to get on the next DM, but then we'll come back and do some more of them afterwards. Um, Jane McDowell, Dougal? Dougal, it is Dougal, uh, makes me want to have a garden party. Everyone's invited. I hope you've got a big garden. Seriously, hope you've got, hope you've got a big garden. So let's go on to the next DM. Now, all I did is I've covered the box exactly as I did before. With the exception, I didn't do the edges of the boxes. I wanted to leave that plain, but I have actually done exactly the same thing. And you'll see I've left the gap in case the lid is a tight fitting lid. On the top, I just did single piece of um, paper. And then what I did is, and you will find these in any craft store, these little like cabochon pearl things, they're, they're everywhere. I just stuck them on with a little bit of glue. I know they have a sticky pad on the back of them. I don't trust things like that. So I just stuck it on with a little bit of glue. So that's that's it. So we're going to leave the lid for a second and we're going to look at the box. Now, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to give it a different sort of a flavor. So I used one of the Rococo mold pieces. 
Uh, where's it gone? Okay, this is corners and crest. So these are the corners and this is the crest. And I've thought, right, we'll use them on here. So this is the crest as it comes out. And these are the corners. Now the corners, there is a left and there is a right. So when you make them, if you do in a box, you'll need four lefts and four rights. Um, also, these have just been painted and then used the gilding wax. So that brings all of that detail out. So we want to first put those onto the box. So again, I'm going to use the same glue as I did before, just to get everything sorted. Um, it would be interesting after this, if you do order some of these from us, which I hope you do, because they're fabulous. If you do make anything from them, when you post your pictures, if you tag in KTC Designs, we'd love to see what you're doing. We're always looking for new inspiration. It's lovely out there. And anytime you comment on anything of this, we do read it. We don't always have the chance to get back to them because you can imagine there are lots and lots and lots of comments out there. But loving this. I was going for more of a shabby chic memory type box with this one. So stick that on there. So turn it over one bit. Now, um, I have been asked in the past whether I would use hot glue with um, air drying clay. I have done occasionally, but I found with air drying clay, if you use hot, air, uh, hot glue, sometimes they end up popping back off again over, over the course of time. And I don't know why that is. So I, I tend to, if I want something that's going to be, um, I'll use the word archival, not knowing whether it's the right word or not. But um, if I'm planning to build something that's going to last a longer time, I like to actually use um, a glue that I know is going to be permanent. Uh, and I do class the PVA glue as a permanent glue as well. And it would stick equally as well. I'm literally doing it with this glue because I want it to grab. Because if I was doing PVA and turn the box over on its side, um, they'd probably all slide off again. Uh, one more turn, just one more end. There's my left and right. There you go. So um, I'm up to. So I can see out the corner of my eye the comments are flying in, and I do thank you for that. We will be announcing the winner live at the end of this show, by the way. So be very happy to give one of the boxes away. Be a nice little memory, a memory in itself, even if it is a memory box. So there you go. That's just given that that vintage shabby sheet type feel. So let's put that to one side just to let it dry. And then we're going to take some time to work on the lid. Now, I've actually done a few things here. I have pulled together the numbers. And as you can see, they've got almost a metal feel to them. And I've done that just with some of that gilding wax. It was a, sil it was a silver gilding wax. So I'm going to pull these up, stand my box up. I'm not sure it's going to stand, so let me just see if I can hold it in place with that. And I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to glue these onto the edge. I thought that might be a nice way to use them. Um, if you're doing this at home for yourself, I would truly recommend getting a pencil and centralizing them just to make sure that they're central on your edge of your box. I'm just eyeballing this purely for time. Now, once I've done both boxes, you will see that the lids are obviously interchangeable because they're loose fitting lids. As I said, if you're recycling package that's got um, a flapping lid, you can actually use the hinges one on that instead of just the locks and keys. So let's put that down there. Move out the way there. Now, this is going to be a bit of a challenge for me because I have to spell memories. Not the best person for spelling memories. Um, O R I. Have I lost an E? Please tell me I haven't lost an E. I've lost an E. No. Oh, see, told you I couldn't spell. Laura, who knows everything, came to my rescue again. So <laughs> I'm not going to say that on air. That would be cruel. So right, okay. So I've got this. I now need to, as I said. I'm just going to audition my pieces up to where I want them on my box lid. If you wanted, you could cut yourself a circle of card just as a guide, anything like that. But I'm quite happy with those. 
you know, she's telling me to bring the box lower down again. That's just me being a me. I always do that. I always put things too high. So, right, coming on in, and I'm just going to put the lid. There you go. Just going to glue this down. So, um, if you didn't want to do gilding wax on these, um, you can get a very similar effect by dry brushing. Now, a dry brushing technique is you would actually take some acrylic paint. I would normally do it with acrylic paint and not add any water to it. I would then dip my brush into the patch and I'd wipe it off almost entirely onto a bit of kitchen paper, a kitchen towel, and then just brush lightly over the top of my letters. And that would actually bring them back to life. Um, if I have a chance and I get this done in time, I will try and do a quick demonstration on it because I know that we've got one letter that I did at the beginning of the show that might be dry enough for me to do it on. Well, okay. I'm, ha I'm, having, I'm having comments in my ear that are making me feel like a fool. So, but I'm not really a fool, I know. <laughs> so, right, we've got that on the go. Now, um, one of the papers actually has lots of Union Jacks on it, and I wanted to actually use a Union Jack on this purely because it's it's a British celebration, the Jubilee. It can be whichever flag you wish, though, guys. So let me just pull in my glue stick again. Where have I put the glue stick? I've lost the glue stick. So. Let's put that on there. I thought that was just a really nice nod to what the garden party was about. Now we bring in the teapot and the teacup. Now on this one, let's see if I lift that up a little bit closer. I used a little brush with some acrylic paint, just did a little spiral. And because it's on the side of a cup, it makes you think that it's actually a hand painted rose or something. So just be aware that you don't have to be the world's best artist to create something that gives the illusion of something else. So just know that that's there. Or you could just, I mean, I think you could probably even just use, an, um, use a pen to do it if you chose. There you go. Now, when it comes to this side, I thought it might be quite nice. I just got some... I got some postage stamps and you can just get postage stamps. Just collect them off your own mail. That's what I'd say. I, they don't have to be vintage. They don't have to be anything whatsoever. I have some left over from my junk journaling. I use postage stamps a lot. So I've got a little bit of a collection, but you never know. You might find some old letters with them on or just use modern ones. No one's going to know. No one's going to comment. They're just going to see a beautiful box and think of it as a memory. Because when someone gets this in a few years time, maybe you leave it for somebody who knows those stamps may be vintage by then. So we've got that on the go. I just want to put the cupcake in there as well. Pop him in there. And obviously I want to put a crown in the center because that's what this is about. So, and that's the box finished. And that's just a really quick box. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did with the other one. I'm going to put the one that's drying to one side so that I don't damage it. And we're going to take a quick look at the one that I've actually done. So here you go from the top. So we've done exactly the same box twice. Just so you can see all of the lovely detail on them. Really brings it through. It looks a bit like a French jewellery box, to be honest with you. And then the lid. Now, the lid, as I said, you could interchange the lids between them. But that's a really lovely little gift to make. As I said, how about filling it with memories for the grandchildren? How about filling it with memories for yourself? Just how about filling it with gifts and giving it to somebody? So what I want to do now is I just want to show you that dry brushing technique because I know we've got a few minutes so I can get, get on with that. So, right, let's just pull this. So I've got, I've got the C2 that I had. Let's actually bring in that as well. And then I want to go and do some comments after that. I've got brushes everywhere here, guys. Right, where's some paint? Oh, I can't get my paint open why is my paint stuck oh oh goobies i've got paint goobies everywhere okay this is just regular acrylic paint guys just a little bit of a regular acrylic paint 
Now I'm going to take just a regular brush. I tend to favor a flat brush. I'm just going to take some on and take as much off as I can. And then I'm just going to brush across the top of the molded piece. Now these pieces, you saw me mold them, so they're not perfectly dry yet. But And I'll lift these up to show you. But you can see just by, let's put them in my hand, just by brushing across the top, it brings out all of that extra detail. And that's what I refer to as dry brushing. OK, so if you haven't got any gilding waxes, that's the way to go. So let's put that down by there. So, OK, where are we up to? Right, I think I want to take you through the website one more time. And then I want to hit the comments again because we've got loads and loads of comments. So we'll go there. So let's have a look at that website again. Remember, it's www.katysue.com. And if you go to forward slash garden party, it will take you through to this page now on this page i mean this this video doesn't show you all the way to the bottom of the page but if you scroll down you'll see lots more project products that i've used on the show like the clay and stuff like that this was the bundle i put together for you we thought it'd be really handy the crowns are wonderful i mean i know we're celebrating a jubilee but hey what about the little prince or little princess you've got in your life click on the product goes into your basket and then you go straight through checkout so Loving that. Love for you to do that for me. Um, and don't forget, on our Facebook, make sure you share and tag us in. If you create anything, we would love to see that. So back to comments. Right. Where am I up to here? All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Good grief. Um, da, da, da. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, make sure. OK, I've done that. Lorraine. Um, oh, those boxes would be a lovely afternoon tea as well. They would actually, that's a good idea. You could actually, if you put, say, you went on a picnic and actually filled the box with little packs of sandwiches and cookies and stuff like that. And actually, so you got almost like a packed lunch and you went on an excursion. That'd be a nice idea. I like that idea. Thank you, Lorraine. Carol Keane, take. Taking note of all these great handy tips. Thank you. We we want you to succeed, so we share where we can. Catherine, oh wow, I love the little flowers on the teapot. My creative mind has started running them up. Yeah, those are really handy. That's um, the blossoms and birds mold, and it's really cute, and the birds are really cute as well. Um, lots of different uses for that. Jay Madeline, the petty fleur oval plaque mold would also has a little rose that fits perfectly into the. Yes, it does. Very good call. Hadn't thought about that one. Uh, Lorraine, I have some little suitcases from the works. I'm going to decorate them. Oh, that's sweet. I've seen those little suitcases. Those are so cute. Nice idea. Um, freezer tip is a great idea, especially for the finer molds. Yes, um, Sapphire, it works for some people. It doesn't work for other people. I would say it depends on what you're putting in the mold. I mean, I believe the comment was about polymer clay and to get polymer clay to be softer, you warm it up. But then when you curl, cool it down, it, it becomes more rigid. Um, I do know that sometimes if I'm using molding chocolate, uh, modeling chocolate, it becomes very hot in my hands. If I put it into a mold and then put that in the fridge or the freezer, it's easier to pop out. So it depends on, as I said, your your ambient temperature of where you live and also the temperature of your hands. And I've got radiators for hands, so believe me. Polymer clay is not an issue in my hands, I can assure you. Um, Jane, yes, a big garden which opens out onto a field. Bring your wellies just in case. OK, OK, we're all going to Jane's place. Jane, we will be there. It may take us a few hours, but we'll be there. Put the kettle on. I love a nice cuppa. Uh, Sapphire, one more time. Uh, we have started a family challenge, taking one each of the same recycled item. Last one was a snack tube and turning it into something else. I used loads of Katie Sue molds to make the little building and garden, which each of we each have a margarine tub this month. I'm going to make mine into a treasure chest. The lock and key mold would be perfect. What a lovely idea. Getting together once a month and you all have a project to make together. That's such good family time. I must admit, I personally find it not upsetting, but it's a bit disturbing when I go to friends' houses and they've got children now, and they're either in separate rooms or they're all sat on the couch, all on their all on their devices. They're not interacting with each other. They're not talking. And I really applaud parents and grandparents who go, you know, turn the technology off, 
we're going to create, we're going to sit down and have a conversation, we'll read a book, do something. And you know what? I loved my childhood purely because it was all about creativity. And look where it got me. I loved it. So thank you very much. So we have a winner. Um, I've just been announced. <laughs> Jane McDougall. Dougal, Dougal, Dougal. M-A-C-D-O-U-G-A-L. Um, I believe we're going to be in contact. Is that correct, correct Laura? OK, Jane, um, if you direct message Katie Sue on Facebook, um, get in contact with them. They need your address and then that way we can send out one of the boxes to you. Congratulations. Absolutely fabulous. Guys, that's been a that's been a fun show. It's been a fun field show. It's lovely. Um, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for the comments. Thank you to the design team who does all this and supports me. Thank you for the crew back there who make my life a misery through this earpiece. I'll have you know. Only joking. I couldn't do it without them either. Um, we've got another show coming up in May. You will see posts from myself on my Facebook page and you'll see it on KTC's social media links as well. We've got a show on Thursday, the 5th of May. Um, what the topic is, I'm not 100 percent certain yet. We've got a meeting directly after this. Love to see you there. Um, until next time. Bye bye, guys. See you around.